Hey everyone, welcome to part five of the 3D printed F1 gearbox project. Progress is coming along nicely uh, with the software and the electronics and honestly the mechanicals are uh, pretty close to being done. Uh, since the last video I've gotten some great feedback from the community and I actually was provided with some uh, inside technical details uh, regarding the control systems as well as some of the other parts of the inside of the gearbox which I welcome and greatly appreciate. Um, you know it's awesome to learn so much about these little these uh, gearboxes and the perfectionist in me wants to redesign the entire gearbox to correct all of the things that I didn't get quite right. But I think I've come too far at this point and I think it would make more than a passable desktop model. Also, a few adventurous souls have asked for the CAD and the STL files for the gearbox. I do plan to release everything to my GitHub once uh, version one is baked. I've also received some quests for information on how I reverse engineered the gearbox and how a few of the particular parts were actually designed in Fusion 360. So I am planning a prequel sometime in the future to cover these topics and uh, other work that occurred prior to me uh, starting my YouTube channel. Onto the gearbox. Now that I have all but a couple of the final parts printed for the gearbox, I took everything apart uh, to perfectly hone it all in. I spent some time sanding a couple of the sliders that were sticking. I also sanded the faces of all the dogs on all the gears so that the sliders slide right off and drop smoothly into gear. Um, I found this was an issue which caused uh, mischiefs on my earlier sequential dog box, uh, mainly because there's no load on the output shaft. The slider would get stuck on the rough surface of the dog teeth's face. I used a cool trick I learned from Adam Savage on a couple of the parts where the clearances were too large or the layer lines were causing issues. I coated those areas in cyanoacrylate and then sanded those parts once it dried to get a tighter fit. It worked really well um, and you can actually polish the glue to get a really great smooth finish. I also fought with the uh, shift forks some more. Uh, I had to use a hairdryer to perfectly straighten and individually tune each of the shift forks to ensure there was proper clearance between the slider and the dog teeth uh, so that when the gear wasn't engaged it wasn't uh, hitting the dogs on either side. I then set the end play for the main shaft and the lay shaft as well as the shift barrels themselves. Um, I actually had to create a little snap-on spacer that's, I don't know if you can see, it's down here at the end of the shift barrel so that this is held firmly in place with only about a half a millimeter of play. I still need to cut the tube that goes over these threaded rods. Uh, I've held off on that because that tube is actually my camera boom right now, um, but I'll probably get that next week. Uh, I also need to get some nylock nuts uh, because these nuts uh, vibrate right off. This, uh, the gears are not very well balanced and they're you know not perfect to 3D printed. So pretty much immediately after the last video, I ditched that uh, hobby speed controller and put in the Cytron MD13S. Um, and I haven't looked back, it's been much better. I still have some oscillations uh, with the PID control, um, but I chalked that up to my poor controller tuning. I can now you know set a target RPM the motor hits that RPM very quickly and the gearbox holds that RPM even with uh, changes in load. Okay, onto the steering wheel remote. So as you can see here, I actually got 
everything wired up and all the wires actually fit in there. It's an extremely tight fit and assembly was a real nightmare. Uh, I'm still having some issues with these four digit seven segment displays. I can't get these multiplexers, the uh, SX1509s to refresh quickly enough. Um, and all you end up with is really dimly lit numbers. And so I've actually kind of been scratching my head of what I'm gonna do with that. I did find on AliExpress, they have some I2C uh, bus uh, four digit displays that are like 75 cents a piece. So I went ahead and ordered a pair of those, um, but it'll take four to six weeks to get here. But that would be nice because I could eliminate 20 plus wires in one of these multiplexers. So I think that would definitely be worth it if I can fit it in there with its PCB and everything. I also don't have the front cover on right now. Um, when I was assembling this, I was hoping that I'd just be able to essentially split the steering wheel in half. Um, anytime I needed to service things, just take off four screws and open the wheel up. But due to the uh, tight constraints and all the wiring that's just packed in there, the only way to assemble the steering wheel is going to be with the front off. So I've got to redesign the front so that it's removable, uh, potentially with some little clips or some, or, uh, some sort of bolt on type, like quarter turn fastener. Uh, now for the good stuff. I spent a good week trying to use HTTP over the Wi-Fi network uh, between the remote and the gearbox, which was okay. But the two-way communication code was a nightmare, um, being that it's all in HTML and it's a lot of string parsing. And there was a noticeable lag when you pulled the paddle versus when the gearbox actually shifted. So that led me to start using ESP Now, which is a unicast two-way communication protocol developed by Espressif, the makers of the uh, ESP32 chip. Um, it also requires very little code. In fact, the only code I had to change from the example was to modify the variables being sent in the payload that I wanted to pass back and forth. Without getting too technical, the remote and the gearbox essentially pass back and forth an identical struct that contains all the relevant data, such as the RPMs, the throttle, the current gear, etc. cetera. Um, the struct also contains a field that stores an action uh, as an integer to request an upshift, a downshift, or to control the uh, learning mode. Uh, I added a diagnostic sequence to the starting of the steering wheel, which you guys saw when we first started the video. And then after it actually completes that sequence, you can see that it's actually displaying the current gear that the gearbox is in. Now that the gearbox and the steering wheel are uh, communicating, I started testing with the uh, gearbox partially assembled. Uh, there were some initial hiccups and uh, many, many potentiometers died in the uh, testing of this gearbox. Uh, but after adding some additional safeties, I was able to diagnose the uh, issue and now it's working great with uh, no lag whatsoever between uh, pulling the shift paddle and the gearbox actually uh, shifting. I have the gearbox right now set at about 500 RPM and when I pull the paddle to upshift, you can see, boom, it shifts. Um, I've been waiting so long to see this. Uh, can't tell you how satisfying it is. I have noticed the motor speed does oscillate a bit when I'm shifting really rapidly. Um, so I may need to look at multi-threading that functionality. Uh, I also need to tune my stepper motors more. I think the acceleration curve is too steep and at times the stepper, stepper stall halfway through the shift. The other design challenge I have right now is the uh, strength of the gearbox itself. The vehicle simulation, especially the testing of the vehicle simulation is gonna put a lot more stress on the gearbox. Um, I printed the majority of these parts out of uh, silk PLA, which looks awesome and is very low friction, uh, but it has absolutely terrible layer adhesion. In fact, these are all the shift barrels that I've broken in just literally the last week. Um, you can see all of them have sheared off at the layer line. But when you compare it to say, this one, which is actually got three millimeter larger holes, and it's actually a thinner wall uh, made out of PLA plus, you could hammer nails in with this thing. Um, whereas I've had some of these break just by falling over on my workbench. Another area where the strength of silk is even worse than uh, in the shift barrels is in the gears themselves. Um, if a slider is slightly misaligned, and it grabs just an individual tooth before it grabs all five teeth, what will happen is it'll actually just shear that tooth off 
and then it'll you know move on and shear the next tooth and so on and so forth and usually it'll shear all five uh, gear teeth right off. I know now that I could actually go into my slicer and actually make two models um, one of the actual inside of the gear and the other the outside of the gear so that I can actually have um, two different infill and wall settings so that I can make the teeth significantly thicker but I don't think the uh, silk PLA is going to hold up for that so if I can't get this working with my current supply of silk PLA which I'm almost running out um, I'm planning on reprinting the gears in either PLA plus or PET G um, I know it won't look as good Again, thank you for all the support and the additional insights that you've been able to provide about these gearboxes over the past couple of weeks. Um, you all are awesome. It makes me so glad that uh, I went public with this project. If you enjoyed this video, uh, please hit the like button. And if you'd like to see more content like this, uh, please consider subscribing. Thanks.